Hello, John L. Scott. How you doing? Hope you're having a great day. Hope everyone's healthy out there. These are definitely unprecedented times that we've never been through before. And today I want to go through a few things with you. And uh, first of all, I want to really say thank you. I'm sure all of us feel the same way. Our, our, my words can't express how thankful I am for the doctors, the nurses, the first responders, and uh, the grocery people, the delivery people, everyone who's helped making our lives easier to get through this, pro this situation together. And this definitely is unprecedented times. And I think I want to go through a few things with you and give you some perspective about the whole thing. Uh, first of all, I'd like you to take a deep breath. I'm going to go through some perspectives with you on my life and what I learned along the way. But as I'm going through it, I want you to take your life and you'll find some similarities. So when I grew up, I'm usually a pretty private guy. But now it's, you know, this is a time for me to kind of be a bit more open and tell you a little bit about more about my life. So when I grew up, my mom had multiple sclerosis, so she was in bed most of my childhood. But one thing about my mom, she had a mental attitude, she was positive, she was strong, she was always there for us. You would never know she was bedridden. And my dad was loyal, committed to the family, my brother, my sister, we all stepped in and did what we had to do. So bottom line, my mom was really the rock. She gave me my, my mental attitude and really, really, really would be with my positive DNA, be positive. So when my mom passed away back in 38 years ago about, probably my shock and awe moment when my mom passed away is when we put the coffin down into the ground and in the Jewish religion, we put, we take a shovel, all the immediate families there and friends, we put the shovel and put the dirt over the coffin until the coffin is, is uh, covered. Okay, so that was probably my shock and awe moment back in 1982. Okay, 12, 12, 82, that's when my mom passed. So what I learned from there, that was my shock and awe moment. Wow, my mom really passed. But my mom's always been with me, her attitude, her mindset. And so she's always there. But that was my shock and awe moment. So that was back 38 years ago, okay? So that we move on, right? So then I got married. There's another, that's not shock and awe. Sometimes it feels like it. <laughs> got married, had kids. That's wow, beautiful times, good times, and all that stuff. Got in real estate in 75. 77, we opened Camus. 81, 82 is when the market went crazy. It went, it went off the charts. Re bankruptcies everywhere. Everything was happening. The market fell apart. I'd never been through anything like that. I got in, in, when I got into 75, everything was crazy good because I didn't realize we were just coming out of a recession and that's why everything was going crazy, right? I didn't know that. I didn't know what I didn't know. So 1981, two, recession started. Interest rates went to 18%. We almost went bankrupt a few times. This Camus Realty. I uh, went a year over a year without a paycheck. I didn't know what I didn't know. But what I did know is we had a team of people. We had, to, we had true grit. We were going to wake up every day and do whatever it took to get through that period in 1980s. But I had to go through it to learn it, just like you had to go through it to learn it. I had to grow personally, professionally, financially, which you're learning now. Many of you learn now. Cash is king. I have to have liquid cash. It's not an option. Peace of mind, money is liquid cash. You have to be liquid. But I have to learn it back then in the 80s. So I knew when I came out of this thing, the company was going to be a cash and carry company. The only leases we would have is on space, on uh, maybe copiers and things like that. But we we're going to get out of this thing, cash and carry. But we had a great team of people back in the 80s. Some of them are still with us now. You know, Jim and LB and I, man, we were brainstorming, doing whatever it took every day. We woke up to move this thing forward. The agents all stepped up. Same type of thing, just like now, right? So that was my shock and awe back in the 80s. Because I almost lost everything, okay? But I had to go through it to learn it and grow and move forward, just like some of you are going through now. So that was my 80 shock and awe moment. And then we transitioned out of that. 18% interest rates. Imagine that. Right now, I never thought we had three and a half. Figure that one out. But it takes a recession. It takes something to happen for rates to be at three and a half, just like they started. So if I fast forward, 9-11, the shock and awe moment was when the plane hit the buildings, like I talked before. Then little by little, we got back to our normal lives. The recession 10, 12 years ago, the shock and all moment, people losing their houses, agents losing their houses, no business, shock and all moment, right? Then we transitioned and we learned a lot from there. And I took notes through the process. And back in the 80s, I was taking notes. What am I learning? What, what's going on here? So I'm always journaling like you should be doing now. What are you doing now? So back, so if you look at the shock and all moment now, it was probably more like a week ago or so ago. First, it started up in Kirkland with all the you know, with all the, you know, cases up in there, and then we had a few deaths, okay, then it spread everywhere, right? So the shock and awe moment, probably for the virus, was when the malls closed, the stores closed, everything closed, restaurants closed, we were told to stay home, there's your shock and awe moment. But now we're getting used to new normals, we're used to staying home, right? We're used to not going to restaurants, we're used to figuring it out at home, I'm used to doing, now I've got to do videos and those kind of things, but I got to go through it to learn it. One thing I do know is some of you are getting stuck in today, right? And today will pass. 
What I call this is you're living a moment in time. When my mom passed, that was a moment in time. The 1980s was a moment in time. It's a blip on my screen in my 68 years of life. I have what's called TOP, time on planet. So basically I got my life experiences, business experiences, that's all I can pull from. So I don't get too mental during this process. I know what this, I see what this problem is. The problem is the virus. What are the solutions? Well, the best people in the world are working on the vaccine are some medical, some medical solutions. So I'm not worried about that. I'm out of my control, my focus. That's, that's the solution. What are my solutions? What are my things I gotta be concerned about personally? Here's my concerns. Here's my solutions. I put them in place. What are the fears my team might be going through? What are some of the solutions we can place? and help them out through the process and our clients and those kind of things. I'm very solution oriented. I put an offense in place where I need to be putting in place. You know, Tom uh, Ferry, he likes to talk about, I put this in my last video. He talks about the three little pigs. Mainly some people have a house of straw and some people have a house of brick. Brick, basically if you straw, you blow it, it's gone. Brick, harder to blow. It's, it's gonna stay up forever. But what I found really in life, nobody has all brick or all straw. We all have strengths, so my strengths would be be able to connect with people, get things done, blah, blah, blah. My weaknesses, my straws, if you will, will be technology, admin, right? And so now I gotta pick up my pace and make some of my straw my brick and put a plan in place for all that. That's what you guys should be doing too. So right now, if you really look at it, if it's me, I'm doing, you know, I, I realize I have 30 day goals. Okay, why do I have 30 day goals? I have 30 day goals because I have to look at the guidelines the governor has given us to do real estate. And I realize if I'm an agent in the field, right, I'm only, I'm going to be safe for me and my family first. And if that means I'm not showing houses or doing listening presentations one on one, I got to make sure I'm safe. And then you're going to find out you have to customize today's world to your client, not you. Like I said in my last video, it's never been more important to put yourself in your client's shoes. Because older people, we might not want you at our house, right? <laughs> We're concerned that you're coming in and you might bring the virus because everybody can get the virus. We know that. So your younger people, you know, some are getting, I got it. Some people know they have it, but they're carriers. So if you come into my house, I'm not that excited, but I trust you as my agent. So therefore we can do a lot of things virtually, right? And I'll be okay with that because I trust you. And I know what a, I know what virtual is <laughs> today, right? So there's a lot of things that have changed, but you have to customize your program and plan to each client. Some people are gonna to want to be in the house, some aren't gonna to want to be in the house. Some sellers are gonna to love to meet with you. Maybe you're gonna to have to come in with booties, gloves, and a mask. And I know that's kind of controversial because we're trying to save masks for the first responders and the nurses and all that. But maybe if you're coming in my house, I want you to have protection. So I'm protected, right? And if you're bringing buyers into my house, I might want them to wear those kind of things and all that kind of stuff. And if you're bringing a buyer to my house, I might go in the yard as a seller and let you do your thing with your buyers. So you have to make sure you are very, you know what's comfortable for you first to be safe for you and your family, but also each client is different on what can make them comfortable and safe. This is a whole different world, but you're gonna become better and stronger as you go through the process and you have to understand that. The other thing I'm doing is I'm rewriting my 10-year letter. So here's my 10-year personal letter because my priorities are changing, right? Like I said, my kids got married years ago, not that many. We just had grandchildren in the last six, eight months. Haven't been able to see them much. So everything's changing. I wanna see my family, I wanna see my kids, I wanna see my extended family, I wanna see my friends, right? I wanna go back to work and see all you guys because what you do miss is the culture, the energy that we all put together. I miss the company meetings. These are my company meetings now and that's okay, we'll move this forward. But we're coming up with solutions as we move forward. So I'm redoing my 10 year personal goals because they've changed. I'll still travel and I'll do all those things. We'll still have family vacations and we'll do all that stuff as we move forward. Again, like I said before, we have to delay it. I'm not gonna cancel it. Some people might be delay their real estate decisions and not gonna cancel the real estate decisions, okay? Then I might be, I'm gonna definitely write my career goals. So I'm writing my career goals. If I'm an agent, I might put, I might have 10 year personal goals for me and my family because your kids are gonna be 10 years older, your grandkids are gonna be 10 years young, older. Then when my, per, my professional goals, I might go out five years, right? Maybe I'm not gonna go out 10. You know what? Here's my perfect world in five years in my professional life. Well, here's what my business looks like. Here's what I'm doing. Now, a lot of you, you guys, you know, I tell you, I was talking to Emmanuel yesterday, uh, two days ago, excuse me, and or three days ago now, okay, Emmanuel. So basically he said in the first 60 to 70 days of the year, January 1 to about March 10th, there was 68 listings taken between the two offices who had their clients on buy side. So in other words, he could track it that these people got listed because they, they were on buy side. I'm not, I'm not saying buy side with the cure all for the listings, but what I'm saying is just more exposure. If you're not taking this time to get all your people, get your database updated and all these kinds of things, address to phone number, emails, put them on the John Scott tools, 
And but though that's a no-brainer, you're going to come out stronger, more productive, more effective, and more profitable on the other side. There will be a recovery. Right now, all the government cares about all these trillions of dollars, and some of you have definitely got those emails. You should be signing up right now for all the free money that's out there. And also go to treasury.gov to see if there's anything else there for you. All the government cares about now is getting the money out the door to take care of the people that have gotten laid up. They want to laid off. They want to make sure that the, the employers and the play, employees, as best they can, stay connected. So when we get on the other side of this, the employers, they're going to hire their key employees back on a skeleton basis. And we can move forward, plug and play on a recovery quicker. But if the employer has to go and find the people and train them up and all that, it's going to take longer. Now, let's talk about this. How does this really look? Let's talk about a recession. Are we in a recession? Yeah, of course we are. This is a self-induced recession. You don't tell America to go home, close the stores, close the economy, don't fly, don't go anywhere without going into recession. It's a self-induced recession for the right reason. Health, health, and health, right? Could you imagine if we didn't, weren't locked down and this thing was spreading like crazy and we're all going out there infecting one another? This would really be bad news and we'd go into recession one that way. Okay, this way we're trying to go into a planned, we are going into a planned recession, but all the trillions of dollars coming out is to maintain. Try to keep everybody's life somewhat normal the best they can. It's up to people to sign up and go. Just like it's up to you to guide down these e emails, see what we're sending you, staying relevant and go, right? With treasury.gov and what we mailed out yesterday, there's all kinds of information. I'd be signing up sooner than later and work with your banks and your CPA to see what you qualify for, because this money will run out. It's first come, first serve. I'm not saying the government won't put more money out there, then that's cool. The other thing, I just, I just wanna make sure you understand how this thing probably will look going forward. So now the trillions of dollars coming out and maybe trillions more is to maintain, not recovery, maintain. Try to keep America maintaining and as sane as they can through this process and give them the money and the small businesses. And there's gonna be holes and the government, the feds will fill the holes as they see them on the money side. Just like if you look at our business in the last week, one day we can't sell real estate, Saturday afternoon we could sell real estate with guidelines, now we got stadiums and photography. Everything is fluid on a daily basis because we've never been there before and we're all working it out together. So here we go. We're gonna put trillions of dollars out there to maintain, not recover, we're maintaining. And then little by little, as we get through this process, we know we need a vaccine or some therapeutics to have people comfortable to go back to work. Then the employers little by little open up with the new guidelines. Restaurants are gonna probably be staggering their tables and chairs and rest. everyone's gonna have to figure that out. Okay, then, so now you start opening up a little bit, then the public has to get comfortable going out. So you got a process here to get to the other side. Then there'll be trillions spent on the recovery. We're not there yet, okay? We're on the maintain. Now let's talk about real estate. Real estate's plug and play a lot easier than business or a, a restaurant. We don't have to go and, we really don't have to go and open up a store and a company and all that. All we have to do is keep guidelines in place and work with buyers and sellers because there's buyers and sellers in every market as you are finding out now. I think the uh, market watch last week, you had 1,003 new listings and 1,684 went pending. 1,694 pending, 1,003 new listings. We're gonna have a shortage of inventory through this process because there's gonna be plenty of buyers who wanna take advantage of the interest rates where they are, it's about three and a half fix or whatever they are, you're quoting these days, and they feel good about their jobs. There's plenty of people who feel good about their jobs. We are blessed to have the, the, the companies here we have, Microsoft, Amazon, you know, Google, Facebook, uh, we have, you know, all these, comp Costco, you got plenty of people working for the city, working for the schools. They feel good about their jobs. Groceries, of course, right? So realize this is not, I understand this is not life or business as usual, but there is business out there. I want you being safe going out there. The other thing that we're going to start tomorrow with, tomorrow we're going to start a series of uh, agent sessions. So the goal is to have one a week or two, maybe we'll see. And tomorrow will be 10 to 1130 with Robin Rue James. And so Robin's been with us 30 years. She's always been one of our top producers. But she's been doing vir vir business virtually for over five years. So not only is she going to go over what she's doing virtually with buyers and sellers, that's fine, but she's going to go over her morning routine. What is she doing to stay mentally tough? What is she doing to be productive? Because she's putting listings on the market. She's productive. But she has a system and a mental toughness that's second to none. Part of it is T.O.P. She's been in the business 30 plus years. She's had life experience, business experience. So she's going to come from a place tomorrow that basically she's going to share all this stuff and then we'll have a few other agents talking also if you'd like what you could do is email me saul a at john scott.com and list me just send me the topics you'd like to see us cover we kind of have an idea but we want to get your perspective on what you would like to have happen 
So she's gonna be 10 to 11.30 tomorrow. We'll be sending an email out today, later today, with the Zoom address to go to. If you don't have Zoom, I would be getting Zoom, or else you're gonna be left behind in today's new world. If you don't know Zoom, like me, I didn't know Zoom. Colin Noy has been helping me dramatically. Love you, Colin, thank you, thank you. But I'm getting Zoom, bomb, bomb, Skype, Skype, and get all that crap down. Because I want to, I have to, right? <laughs> and that's where I am. I'm stepping up. I'm gonna come out of this thing stronger than I've ever been, because I'm, I'm inventing new, I'm reinventing myself. So you're learning and growing, you're transforming yourself into your future person. You understand that? You're gonna come back personally better, professionally better, financially definitely better, and you're gonna realize as everyone's trying to get back to their new normal, oh, I wanna get back to normal, I wanna get back to normal. You're gonna find out that your new normals are gonna be different. That's why I'd be rewriting my letters. I'm writing, I'm writing a list of things I wanna do when I can get on the other side of this and go see my kids and go to grandkids, get back in the offices. So I got redid my 10 year, I'm redoing my five-year career goals. I'm my what I want to do after this. What I'm doing now, right? You know, so right now, some of you already know. You guys got to have marketing going out. If you don't have any marketing going out, you're going to be lost. Believe me, there's going to be small businesses, restaurants, small businesses, and real estate agents, and everybody who doesn't make it through this process to the other side. That's just what happens with every recession. Every 10 to 12 years, you go through what I call a recession, but you also go through a cleansing. In other words, like I told you before, it's like in our teenage years, when the hot market, market's hot, it's like I got pimples all over the place and putting makeup, clear us on to hide, the, to hide the pimples. Well, that's the blemishes in my business, right? So now all the makeup's gone, all of my blemishes are showing, which for me was technology and videos, and now I'm taking care of those. You know, we sent out a lot of different things, the ABCs of positive thinking I sent out last week. And really what some of you doing now this is for you, fine, but I guess I really want to say this is really getting out of your head. You can go to work tomorrow if you choose. You have people at home, clients at home, friends, family at home don't have that option. They're concerned if they can pay their bills. They might lose their job. So when they can get a, something like this from you, I would, I personally would just put it in an envelope, mail them out, and I would say, thinking of you, Saul, right? Or whatever you want to say. But the ABCs of positive thinking, some of the, I, I probably put this together in the 80s, as canvas realty when we're going through the recession. So it's all updated, of course. Uh, avoid a is avoid negative sources, media, place of things and habits. B, believe in yourself in any and all situations. E, enjoy life today, do something today that your future self will thank you for. F is a big one. Family and friends are hidden treasures, seek them out and enjoy their riches. L, love yourself first to become your own best friend. P, people will never forget how you made them feel. People will never forget how you made them feel. That's more important today than any time. Uh, T, take control of your own destiny now. You can, then it says, life is what you make it. You got this. You can personalize this to this to you. This says, take your soul. So what p some people are doing with this, some people are putting this in an envelope and they're sending out to their whole database, right? Be and then, because you got to understand, if you would have sent this out 45 days ago, they said, Saul, what the hell are you thinking? Everything was going. They were going to restaurants. Stock market was at 30,000. We were at an open house at 100 people. We had all that going on. Now they're home. They're listening. They're reading. And this is going to touch them more now because of what we're all going through together than any time you can send it and they're going to remember it. Today, they're going to remember your conversations more than ever before and treasure them. And they're anything you're doing to make their life caring, supportive, and be in their form. Some of you were telling me, oh, God, my calls are so much longer. You know, I, I used to be five, two, five minutes, two minutes, three minutes on an event call. Now I'm 15, 20 minutes. Let me give you a stat. <clears throat> Excuse me. So Veri the CEO of Verizon was on TV the other day. They were interviewing him. So they were asking, well, what's different? What trends do you see? This is Verizon, right? He's saying Mother's Day is usually our busiest call day. And we might have, my numbers might be wrong, so forgive me. We might have 40,000, 60,000 calls, 400,000, whatever he said, calls. We are double that now almost every day, and the duration is 30 minutes. People are reaching out the way they reach out. They're reaching out from texting. They're reaching out from emailing, calling, right, videoing. Everything works right now because people are home, and we're all in this together. Do you understand that? And there's, no been a better, there's never been a time where everyone's in something together in the whole world, in the whole country. You have companies working together that would never work together. Johnson & Johnson's working with Lilly. These are pharmaceutical companies. Let's go get, let's get this done. They're not worried about profits. They want to get everything going again. Everybody wants to get everything going. You're going to be on vacations again. You're going to be in restaurants again. This is a moment in time. So you got to realize, you got to go through it to learn it, but you better write down the lessons you're learning personally, professionally, financially, emotionally, and everything like that. You got to, you got to really be careful what's coming in your mind. 
What I learned years and years ago, I had to be, I had to watch, if I'm going to watch the news, I do. I do my 10 10s in the morning, what I'm grateful for, my morning routine. Then I watch the news, get caught up, and then I do my day, right? So here I'm at 68. I, I'm on a daily schedule. I got my 30 day. Okay, we're going to be in this situation for a 30 day with the guidelines, maybe longer. I'll evolve my schedule. Here's my daily schedule for what's going on. And I evolve my daily schedule because it's so fluid. I'm okay. I'm adaptable. I'm flexing. I'm moving on. I got this. We got this together. I know together we can move mountains, okay? There was a book that came out uh, in the um, 1980s, okay, when the market was going crazy. It says, tough times never last, but tough people do. And this was written by Robert Schuler, who was a pastor back in the day, and because everyone was going bankrupt. The bankruptcies were off the charts and all that. And, you know, what made me think of that book? The last time I brought out that book was back in the recession, 12 years ago, right? And what triggered me to bring it out today and read some stuff was basically I saw Colin Wins doing a happy hour today, uh, and he's, that's his topic, right? So everything kind of triggers me. So the other thing we did, you know, back in, uh, uh, Robin's going to talk about this tomorrow, there was a book I gave out back in the downturn, and uh, basically it's Positive Charges. And so this is a book you might want, first of all, buy it for yourself, but you might want to send it to your VIPs and other people. And what it is, is kind of like one-liners or so that are positive. Your attitude determines your altitude. Build a radiant, cheerful, and optimistic first impression. Uh, people need now more than ever. I think this one here, plant positive thoughts in your mind and expect harvest of great possibilities. Remember that you become what you think about. Remember you become what you think about and what you think about expands. So the Positive Charges by Alexander Lockhart. I definitely buy one for you. And this is a marketing piece that I would definitely uh, look at for your database and your VIPs. So there's a lot of stuff going on. Like I said, people are doing virtual happy hours and virtual connections and different things for different ways. And uh, you know, we're all in it together. I'm, we're brainstorming as a leadership team. We're getting things out the door. Uh, if you look at some of the things that we put out there, you know, we have a buyer for your home. You have to understand, I, I gave this out when Tom Ferry was here, right? Because we had a short of inventory and we were looking for that. Well, now you have sellers who probably don't want people through the house, right? So you don't want, they don't want people through the house. And so again, this letter being tweaked, right, is, is more appropriate today than ever before because all the eye buyers have pretty much gone away, okay? All the buy buyers have per, pretty much gone away, right? In other words, Zillow's not buying anymore, Redfin's not buying anymore. See, they, so, and some of these companies, of course, they're going for a recession for the first time. A lot of companies, situations start in a hot market, right? They don't know what to do in a recession because they've never been through it when it hits. Well, I learned that in the 80s, which helped me way big time. That was my shock and on business. Okay, so we have a buyer for your home. I would definitely look at that because you're going to find that that's going to become more appropriate than ever before. Uh, then we did put out a letter uh, last week. You know, if you're not checking emails, you won't know. Uh, at John L. Scott Kent North Renting, you personalize it to you and your team. Our main focus is to our, to our clients' needs today primarily with their safety, health, and security in mind. With home ownership being one of the largest assets in your portfolio, we realize that the volatility in today's market is a major concern as well as the overall effects of the coronavirus. And so we just put a letter together here and examples of what we can do to help them out. Is now the right time to buy or sell? Let's talk. You know, so all these things, and then Jim helped quarterback 30 things to do in today's market. And uh, I mean, if you don't have an offense in place, this thing's gonna kick your ass. I'll just tell you that right now, right? If I don't have solutions and offense in place that I'm putting daily, sticking to a daily schedule, let it compound positively, you will come out stronger on the other side and increase market share on the other, strong, other side while people are trying to figure it out. We uh, emailed a greatness tracker out. We still have them. This is geared for, we updated for today. So basically virtual, add them to your databases, all kinds of things geared to today, virtual events, hours prospected, campaigns implemented. This is all implemented today. Of course, we, we sent out the Tom Ferry uh, verbiage that he's using. A lot of you signed up for Pivot, which is Tom's program for 99 bucks a month, no contract, all geared today. And he's doing that every day with top producers. And uh, you, got, you got to realize there was a quote by Winston Churchill. A lot of you know who he is, right? So in World War II, of course, he was a leader and he was a very strong leader, very successful leader. Winston Churchill said this, about American people. You can always count on Americans to do the right things after they have tried everything else. <laughs> so that's, I thought that was kind of appropriate. You can always count on Americans to do the right things after they have tried everything else. And we're kind of in that mode right now. 
See, we're in that mode right now because you have Republicans and Democrats working together the best they can. You have pharmaceuticals working together the best they can. You have the, all the smartest people in the world trying to come up with a vaccine. So everyone's working together. This never happened before, but this is a world problem, not an American problem. So this too will pass, right? This is a moment in time. I want you to understand that this is a moment in time. But you do need to get, redo your goals and plans and don't get stuck in the moment because be your future is going to happen in one way or the other. I decide my future. I'm in total control of my future. There's no doubt about that. You got that? So I'm going to do my redo my long-term 10-year letter, 5-year letter, what do you want personally, then 5-year professionally, or if you want longer, or 3-year, whatever you want. And then i got to do a 30-day and a daily because that's geared to the guidelines I have today and the environment I am today. Then every 30, I readjust or whatever as things are changing. So we're very solution-oriented. We have an offense in place. We are going to start this... Um, this agent mastermind group. Go ahead and send me any ideas you might have. Robin will be on tomorrow and about 10 to 11.30. We'll send out the Zoom uh, where, to, where to sign up. Jim's working with me on email to go out. And I tell you, it's just been uh, a blessing for me to work with all of you and the leadership team and all everyone working together here and moving this thing forward because we've never been here before, but I was never at 18% interest rate before. I was never at 9-11 before. I was never at the recession we had last time before. Right? So now we have virus. This is something new. But this will pass. This too will pass. This is a moment in time. It's not your life. It's not forever. This is a moment in time. And the years ahead, you'll be talking about this as I can talk about 18% interest rates or anything else or as we talk about 9-11 today. We go get back to new normals. After 9-11, the airports got safer, more security. After the recession, 12 years ago, the banks are more solid. You actually, actually have to qualify for a loan. After this, hopefully people are more human to each other, more kind to each other. We take time with our families more, but on top of that, we are the, the country, the federal government has systems in place to take care of pandemics and basically have disease. We have an offense in place for what's going on here. We always come out stronger, personally, professionally, and hopefully as a country. So I just want to say thank you all. I know, we're, I know it's challenging time to time. We'll go through this together. It's a moment in time. You have a lot of good moments in time. Thanksgivings, Christmases, all the good ones you've had, the weddings, the kids, the grandkids. Those are still coming. Vacations are still coming. This is just a moment in time. Have a great day. Talk to you soon. Bye.